class cycle, I'm going to go over the two review sheets that you guys can use um, to help take your test. So the first one is the evolution practice quiz that you guys retook already. Um, please know that species or organisms that have the same number of chromosomes, evolution is a change in a species over time. This is probably going to be a test question. And again, natural selection. So an animals that are well adapted to their environment. Okay, survive and reproduce. Remember, environmental factors or environment is one of the things that drives evolution. I would definitely know four and five for your test. Number four, what are the structures that have no purpose for survival? Those are your vestigial structures. Examples in humans that we went over was your appendix, your eyebrows, your hair, right? We don't need hair anymore. If you're cold, you can put on a jacket or a blanket. Next one, number five, homologous structures. These are the structures that are the same but have a different function. What we went over in class was the bone structures in our arms, the humerus, the ulna, the radius, the three major bones there. It's in almost all other mammals. Bat wings, they're made of those three bones as well. Okay. And then I would definitely know these last four here. Overproduction, variation, adaption, and mutation. Individuals in the same species that have different traits, are, it's called variation. Remember, all humans are the same species. We are all humans. However, do we all look the same? Do we all act the same? No. There is differences amongst us. Easy example is hair color. We all have different color hair. Even people who have brown hair have different shades of brown colored hair. Number eight, overproduction, is when animals produce more offspring that can survive. Think of fish and amphibians. They lay thousands and thousands of eggs, and yet only a couple survive. This is another thing that helps drive evolution. Number nine, a mutation is a change in genetic code. Um, remember, some mutations are bad. They can hurt the organism, okay? Imagine if we had a mutation that had a third leg. Would that be good for us? No, exactly. However, what if there's a mutation in our lungs that allow, allowed us to take in more oxygen? That would be a beneficial mutation because we'd be able to intake more oxygen, our cells would be able to make more energy, and it would be beneficial for us. That would be a good mutation. And number 10, adaptation, is a physical or behavioral trait that allows a species to survive. Anything that allows a species to survive, or an organism survive, that's beneficial, is called an adaptation. Okay, the next one is... We're going to skip this one, we're going to go down this one first. Your review sheet, not the review sheet, but the textbook review that you did. Remember, natural selection is the theory of survival of the offspring with favorable traits. He who has favorable traits or has fav favorable traits are going to be more likely to survive. Then that means they're more likely to reproduce. Remember, when you're reproducing, you're passing down your genetic traits. Sorry if you can hear a baby in the background. We went over most of this already. Remember, fossil record, what does it show? Okay, number nine. Fossil record shows that there have been many, many, many different types of species out there over millions of years. However, over 90% of them have gone extinct. Again, remember, extinct means they are no longer living. Any of the species. The fossil record shows that the history of life on Earth. Okay. That's good for this one. Now let's go to the review. 
I would definitely be studying this a couple of times before you take the test. Again, remember, you can technically use your copy of this. Try not to use this one, but use your copy. Okay, Father Revolution, Charles Darwin, right? He studied the beaks of the finches while he's on the Galapagos Islands. What was special about the beaks of the finches was that each finch, right, each different species of finch had their own type of beak. And their beak was dependent on the food source that was available in the environment. Because once again, the environment does drive evolution. If there was only little small insects in the sand, would a big large beak be beneficial? Probably not. Okay, again, homologous structures are body parts that are similar or the same structure. Vestigial structures have no longer any more function. We don't need them, yet they're still around. Fossils are imprints or remains of plants or animals that have lived in the past. Embryology or embryos is when we look at the development of embryos and how the very, very early stages, there's many things that are similar between the embryos, which allow us to say that we've evolved or we've all come from some type of similar species or ancestor many, many million years ago. Biochemistry or biotechnology or DNA shows us how the chemical structures or the um, similarities in DNA, we can see how closely related we are to each other. And superposition, you don't need to know this term for the test. However, you do need to know that the older fossils are going to be lower in the ground than the younger fossils. Remember the, the hamper, the clothes hamper example I discussed in class. All right, guys, good luck on your test. I'm going to try and post these videos as much as possible. I am also going to put in as a memo um, these review sheets as well. So you have the video and you have the actual sheets. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.